Tonight, an apology from police in the sexual assault case shaking Canada's game. The delay in charging five former World Junior Hockey players. I'm apologizing to the victim and to her family because it's taken this long. Full team coverage of the criminal case and wider ramifications. King Charles diagnosed with cancer. The disclosure from the palace. The level of detail that we are getting is unprecedented. State of emergency after an epic snowfall in parts of Nova Scotia. Well, the front door is completely blocked. Plus, protests over Danielle Smith's transgender policies as the Premier visits Ottawa. And a historic night at the Grammys. Taylor Swift. The record win, a perceived snub, and a swift correction. CTV National News with Omar Sachedina. Reporting tonight from London, Ontario. Good evening, everyone. We are coming to you tonight from the epicenter of a legal case that has major implications for the world of professional sports and beyond. London police today acknowledge the strength and courage it took for the woman to come forward in an investigation that has resulted in sexual assault charges against four current players and one former player of the National Hockey League. The chief also apologizing to the victim for the delays, but he did not answer whether the police service itself bears any responsibility for that. Hours before that press conference, the day began in a London courtroom. CTV's Adrian Gobriel was there and leads us off. Omar, this is a criminal case that has transcended sport in Canada. As a result of the Inside a packed press conference, London, Ontario police spoke publicly for the first time since charging five members of Canada's 2018 World Junior Hockey Team with sexual assault. I'm not a hockey player. I don't know nothing about hockey. This is a sexual assault investigation. The charges are connected to an alleged group sexual assault of a woman inside this upscale London, Ontario hotel in June 2018 following a Hockey Canada gala. This case hasn't just put hockey culture under the microscope, it's also called into question how police initially handled the investigation. I'm apologizing to the victim and to her family because it's taken this long. In 2018, the alleged victim filed a report with London police. They declined to press any charges only to reopen the investigation in 2022 after it was revealed that Hockey Canada had quietly settled a lawsuit out of court. When the case was reopened in 2022, our team explored investigative opportunities. I can confirm that some of this evidence was not available when the investigation concluded in 2019. Why do you believe the public should have any faith in London police to carry out this investigation? There's absolutely no need to turn the investigation over to any police service. I have the utmost confidence in this team, in this organization. I personally have never seen a sexual assault investigation take this long to get to its final stages. Current NHL players Dylan Dubé, Cal Foote, Carter Hart, Michael McLeod, as well as former Ottawa Senator Alex Formaton have all been charged with sexual assault. McLeod is also facing one charge of being party to the offence. The first hearing for this case took place today inside a London courtroom where the Crown told the court they would be sharing substantial disclosure with defence teams, including evidence collected by London police. How important is consent in this case? It's incredibly important. Drug use or alcohol use can vitiate consent. Consent is something that needs to be freely given by somebody. The next court date, Omar, has been set for April 30th. All right, Adrian, thank you. Let's bring in TSN senior correspondent Rick Westhead now. And Rick, despite that police news conference this afternoon, there are still so many unanswered questions. That's right. We, for instance, we don't know why police in February 2019 closed the investigation, the initial investigation. Three years pass, they reopen the investigation, and we still don't know why they did that. We also don't know the new evidence that police say they have that were uh, forming the bedrock of the charges that have been laid this month. Now, Rick, this is a case that could take months and months but what are you hearing tonight about how it will exactly be heard well over the coming months there's going to be a lot of pre-trial back and forth motions challenges one of the more interesting ones is whether these players will decide to be tried by a jury or a judge there's advantages to both ways with a judge hopefully from what i've heard a judge does not look at things so emotionally uh, the downside of that is you have all your eggs in one basket with one person and the risk 
of going with a jury trial is that you may have, in this case, the perception for some jurors that you're talking about elite privileged athletes treating a woman in a way obviously that they that they shouldn't be treated you also remember though with a jury trial only really have to convince one juror that there's reasonable doubt to have a hung jury so there's going to be a lot of that back and forth all right rick appreciate your reporting and your insight tonight thank you so much and as we've heard it can take years for police to lay charges cases can then drag on even longer in the courts adding to the pain and the anguish for survivors. CTV's Heather Wright looks at what is often a re-traumatizing legal journey. Heather. Omar, some have called sexual violence in Canada an epidemic, but just how widespread it might be is really hard to tell. The vast majority of people never come forward with their experiences, and those who do rarely see a conviction. The process can be long, intense, and re-traumatizing. About one in 10 people who identify as having experienced sexual violence report that to the police. Only about 1% have seen that result in a conviction. There are a lot of emotions that come up. And Carrie Lowe did come forward after she was sexually assaulted in 2018. Navigating the criminal justice system was complicated and she says it does not protect the victim. How can I go into this system? being told that I am just a witness to my crime, that my body is just a piece of evidence, um, and that I have no support in this system. I have no say what happens. I have no rights. For years, victims' rights advocates have been calling for change in how the legal system handles sexual assault cases, where victims must tell their stories over and over and have their experiences picked apart. We need to have counsel for, for victims to, to put a break on the cross-examination techniques that that seek to, to destroy their credibility on, 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 on tiny little details that no one should ever be expected to have to be consistent on. Daphne Gilbert is a law professor and expects testimony from the complainant in the case involving the five former members of Canada's World Junior Team to be picked apart throughout the trial, which she believes will boil down to consent. You can't have what's called implied or advanced consent. So the fact that she consented at one point in time doesn't mean that she's taken to have consented all the way through. The identity of the alleged victim is protected by a publication ban, but we did hear briefly from her lawyer today, who said the young woman is committed to seeing this process through. Omar. All right, Heather Wright here in London. And in London, England, stunning news from Buckingham Palace. The king has cancer. Tonight, Prime Minister Trudeau is wishing Charles a fast and full recovery as he steps back from his royal duties for treatment. Joy Malbin reports on the monarch and his latest medical challenge. How are you feeling? A week after King Charles left a private London hospital treated for an enlarged prostate, a royal health scare. King Charles has cancer. Our thoughts are, of course, with... His Majesty and his family. Doctors discovered the cancer during the King's treatment, saying only that it's not prostate cancer. The 75-year-old monarch is receiving outpatient care at home, and doctors have advised him to postpone public-facing duties. But he'll continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. Meaning the monarch will work from home, continue his weekly audiences with the Prime Minister, and sign bills into law. If he's being treated as an outpatient, it's unlikely to be, say, uh, rectal cancer. Uh, blood tests that reveal that he might have a, a blood-related cancer, and those can be relatively benign. Charles was crowned king just last May after his mother, Queen Elizabeth, passed away at 96 years old. Sharing the news with the public, a big move by the palace, and an effort to reassure the public. The level of detail that we are getting is unprecedented. And I think this is a sense of Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace to an extent trying to stop the leaks. It's the second health scare to strike the royal family. Princess Kate is recovering at home from stomach surgery. How's the boss doing? Yes, yes, yes. Queen Camilla and Prince William will take on more public duties and expect to see more of Princess Anne and Prince Edward. Prince Harry, estranged from the royals, will travel to Britain in the coming days to be with his father. It's unlikely the palace will give regular updates. It's up to King Charles to decide how much more he'll share publicly while privately battling cancer. Omar? 
uh, battles so many are all too familiar with. Joy, all right, thank you. Atlantic Canada is dealing with an epic storm that unleashed a winter's worth of snow with amounts not seen in two decades. The worst of it in Cape Breton, where a state of emergency was declared. Here's CTV's Chris and Ajigate. This multi-day colossal dump of snow is one for the history books for people on Cape Breton Island. I haven't seen anything like it. I've been around 47 years. It's crazy. Snow fell off Pam Leader's roof, locked her inside. Well, the front door is completely blocked, uh, and, and a lot of it has come from the roof. It's a new roof, and, and it's a metal roof, and a lot of the snow is falling down. The sheer weight of the snow collapsed this convenience store. It's totally blocking my front entrance and um, fell on my SUV. The need is urgent for more snow plows and manpower, with the Cape Breton Regional Municipality and Eskasoni First Nation both declaring a state of emergency. All schools and most public services were closed. I'm seeing some measurements up to 150 centimeters of snow in some, in some places. So as you can imagine, um, snow removal is our first priority. Stephen McGrath had to trudge through snow more than waist high just to get to his vehicle. I know that there's over 100 centimeters in my backyard, not even drifts, just, you know, the entire backyard is just blanketed. Ken Peters told us he spent more than nine hours to clear this massive snow drift off the roof of his stable. I didn't have a choice, you know, it's either I do it, I wait for someone else to do it or accept the fact that it isn't getting done. Nova Scotia's Premier said more provincial help is on the way, but questioned why the CBRM called a state of emergency, adding it won't bring plows any quicker. Will they do anything with it or was it uh, more of just a kind of a PR PR issues? I think the Premier should probably come on up here and see this, the extent of the storm before using such disrespectful words towards our community members. People could spend days digging out in Cape Breton. Meanwhile, the municipality has set up a helpline to get a full scope of just how many people are trapped in their homes. Omar. Just some incredible images. All right, Chris, and thank you. Historic rainfall has drenched California, dumping six months' worth of rain on Los Angeles. This backyard here is just getting wrecked. The deadly winter storm has killed three people and stalled life for about 38 million Americans on flood alert. Mud and boulders crashed down and buried cars. The same weather system caused an avalanche in Nevada. And Chileans are in a two-day mourning period after a ferocious wildfire tore through a region, killing more than 120 people. Emergency crews are still searching for hundreds who remain missing. A frosty reception in Ottawa for Alberta's premier. Danielle Smith was visiting to amplify her province's presence and open a satellite office. The province and federal government have frequently clashed. The latest showdown is over policies that affect transgender youth. Here's CTV's Annie Bergeron-Oliver. Trans rights are human rights. Alberta's new proposed policy restricting gender-affirming care, receiving loud opposition in Ottawa. Jane, Jane, Premier Smith where Premier Danielle Smith is trying to expand her province's presence. I've worked in, in health care in Alberta with trans kids, and I know how damaging this is and how hard it is for children who don't have any sort of support. Protect trans kids! Anger has been growing amongst the LGBTQ2S plus and allied community since Smith unveiled a new policy last week that seeks to ban top and bottom surgery for all children 17 and under hormonal treatment and puberty blockers for anyone 15 and under and will require Alberta parents to give permission before students 15 and under can change their name or pronoun at school. I want to make sure that processes are followed so that it's a well-considered decision and that the child is mature enough to understand the consequences of the decisions that they're making. While in Ottawa, the Premier also met with two Liberal cabinet ministers today who say they asked Smith to do more consultations. I didn't hear anything that change was coming. I heard that the position is is held firmly uh, by the Premier and so I encouraged her to spend more time with people in the trans community. And many in that community say Smith's policy would be dangerous and could lead to youth suicides. Protect trans youth! Holly Brown's daughter is on hormone blockers, a change she says made a positive difference. And the fact that this is happening in our backyard is terrifying based on trends that we're seeing in the U.S. and I know that if this were to come to Ontario tomorrow that my child's life would immediately be put in risk. 
Just 49 Albertans under the age of 18 had top surgery over the last two years, but the province can't say how many of those surgeries were related to gender identity versus cancer and other medical issues. Omar. All right, Annie, thank you. A minister in B.C.'s provincial government resigned from cabinet today over what she said about the founding of Israel. It was a crappy piece of land with nothing on it. Selena's comments were wrong. They crossed the line. Shame on Selena Robinson's comment was denounced by pro-Palestinian groups. She has since apologized. She is out as post-secondary education minister, but will remain in the NDP caucus. Coming up, the problems and progress in hockey culture. What I like about it is they get to skate around. Breaking barriers on the ice. Given how much attention there is on this case, the question has been asked and it will be asked continually in a general sense. Can you tell us today who bears the responsibility for that delay? Listen, that's great. That's a great question and it's a question that everybody wants to know. And right now I cannot answer that question. A lot of questions, but not many answers from London police today. One thing that is clear, this case is part of a bigger discussion about problems within the culture of junior hockey. CTV's Alison Bamford reports from Regina on the issues and the progress. In Saskatchewan, most grow up with some connection to their community rink. And many of these fans spending the night watching junior hockey were once players in the locker rooms. People can be pretty ruthless when they have nobody really holding them accountable for what they say. A larger conversation is happening off the ice around abuse, discrimination and harassment within the sport. There has been a ton of progress in this space, a ton, but we're not done. Former NHL player Sheldon Kennedy is looking to break the cycle of what he calls a systemic culture through his work with Respect Group, an education tool implemented by the NHL and junior leagues. We need to break down the issues that encompass respect and we need to be able to build a confidence in this space so that we can step up and step in. Some researchers say the issues stem from a culture of harmful masculinity and violence, often celebrated in men's elite hockey. It's not just the men that need to change, it's fans, parents, media, coaches, social institutions really need to rethink what we're rewarding from the game of men's ice hockey. But some hockey faithful are seeing a noticeable shift in the culture. They learn confidence and, and respect and I think it's a great sport for, for all kids to play. I'm so good at hockey and I play and that's so fun. I think the PWHL is really good for the game and I think it's really good for all the other little girls out there like myself when I was younger. Researchers and fans are looking to the Professional Women's Hockey League for a chance to create a new culture, one that rewards skill and inclusion. Omar? All right, Allison, thank you. Still ahead. When Canadian legends descend on music's biggest night. They rain and they snow on everyone. So many things I would have done. But clouds got in my way. Female artists stole the show at the Grammys this year, from a pop star's historic sweep to the special comebacks by icons, and also an apparent insult. CTV's Joe Makashan wraps up the night, starting with a Canadian legend feeling the power of love. The carefully choreographed Grammys sometimes offer up a few surprises. This time, it was Celine Dion. I love you right back. <laughs> the five-time Grammy winner is living with stiff person's syndrome, an ongoing health battle that has kept her from the spotlight. When I say that I'm happy to be here, I really mean it from my heart. This was a night to celebrate music's powerful women. 80-year-old Joni Mitchell delivered one of the most memorable and emotional Grammy debuts. I looked at love from both sides. 
the Canadian singer-songwriter working nearly a decade to recover her voice after a brain aneurysm. For the first time in 35 years, Tracy Chapman returned to the stage, the artist performing her 80s hit Fast Car with country star Luke Combs, who also took the song to number one last summer. And Taylor Swift earning a fourth Album of the Year Grammy became the first artist to ever do so. For me, the, the award is the work. All I want to do is keep being able to do this. I love it so much. But social media was quick to call out Swift for a perceived snub of Dion, who presented her with the trophy. A photo posted later that evening shows the two women embracing. And then there's video from the non-televised portion of the awards show after rapper Killer Mike was arrested for an alleged assault. The artist, who earned three Grammys, has been charged with battery. The other big news from the awards show is who didn't win. Toronto rapper Drake, nominated in four categories, called out the Grammys as meaningless in the hip-hop world. Jill Mackishon, CTV News, Winnipeg. After the break. All he wanted to do was have that little hockey jacket and be part of a crew. The effort to make Canada's game more welcoming. At its best, hockey brings people and communities together, like in New Brunswick, where it's game on for children with autism. CTV's Sarah Plowman on a remarkable program. Here we go. The push for the puck. The pass to a friend. Falling down, but not giving up. Julie Doucette wanted her son, who has autism, to play hockey. He wasn't a strong skater and couldn't join a team. I thought that was very unfair because he, all he wanted to do was have that little hockey jacket and be part of a crew. And so the mother teamed up with Hockey New Brunswick to start a program for players just like her son. I like it. Yeah, what do you like about it? What I like about it is I get to skate around. The rink offers breakthrough moments. Last year, Sebastian Velmo struggled on skates. Not now. I'll play a hockey game. He loves his hockey, so this, it's a motivation for him to get up and do stuff. Coach David Melanson runs practice with the help of high school players. More than once, someone who couldn't skate on their own gained the confidence to do it. I had tears basically going down my cheeks, and I'm, I was glad that they proved me wrong. Last year, New Brunswick had one program like this. Now there are three. A lot of kids that can't play hockey just because there's something different about them. So it just makes it better that everyone can play a sport that Canadians love. A signal to kids here. They belong on the ice. Sarah Plowman, CTV News, Dieppe, New Brunswick. Such a powerful message. And that's a snapshot of this Monday from here in London. For all of us at CTV National News, thank you for watching. Good night and see you tomorrow.